Hi, I'm Digby Tantum, and I'm very pleased today to be talking to Dr. Claire Arnold Baker, who is the academic director of NSPC, and also an expert on motherhood and women's issues. So, <clears throat> Claire, as you know, we're focusing on diversity, and obviously one of the very fundamental aspects of human beings is that men and women are different, although actually even that is changing, isn't it? Because it's not quite such a sharp differentiation as it was, and there are ways in which um, that gender difference, certainly, and maybe even the biological sexual difference have become blurred. But obviously the majority of women in our culture currently are cis women and they experience biological issues related particularly to their potential for reproduction um, and also for their loss of potential reproduction too. So my question to you is can you let us know, let the audience know whether that makes their lives particularly difficult, whether we should take special account of that, whether we are taking enough account of that in our culture. Thanks, Digby. Um, yeah, that's a really important question, I think, because as you say, um, those the differences in terms of, we've got differences in terms of gender, but I think the biological um, experience of, um, fem the female biological female experience is, is is always going to make, as Simone de Beauvoir talked about it, women as another, you know, because of our reproductive um, ex um, potential. And I think it comes out in, in different ways, obviously through um, menstruation, women have always got to, you know, think about, they're always pulled back into that bodily experience once a month. Um, and also in pregnancy and um, birth and motherhood, again, are other experiences where their bodily experience um, is going to come out. And on the other end of the spectrum, in, in menopause as well, there are also going to be other bodily experiences, which makes fitting into, I suppose, predominantly into a working culture, um, something that's going to be more difficult um, and different women experience these um, thing, these different stages in different ways. So I think there is a case to, to think about this um, from how, how difficult it is sometimes for women to, to kind of go about their daily lives if they are experience extreme symptoms, whether that's um, extreme um, pain and discomfort from menstruation, whether that's extreme um, morning sickness um, and or sort of issues that have arisen through after the birth of a baby or whether it's menopausal symptoms that they're also experiencing. And I think in some ways what has happened in society is that our working culture has been uh, set up in a way where people don't have Everyone works as if they're, they are not experiencing other um, bodily um, issues, you know, whether that's something that women are concerned with or whether it's about disabilities as well. Um, and it was really interesting recently, I think the government voted down making um, the menopause a protected characteristic um, and that they're, they're saying that it was unfair um, for men. Um, but they're actually they're not actually taking into consideration some of the things that women have to, to experience. Um, another interesting fact around this is, is about um, during the pandemic, the number of stillbirths um, reduced um, and people are putting that down to the fact that women are less stressed going to work, going about their daily lives. And that actually has a, an, an impact on their um, bodily experience and in, in the way that it may result in a, in a stillbirth. So going back to your original question, which is about, you know, should these um, um, experiences be taken into consideration? I think, yes, they should. 
um, the difficulty is, I guess, with everything, it's always on a spectrum. So that there'll be some people who will experience more severe um, symptoms and other people who will not experience them in, in the same way. But I think that, that we have to take that into consideration. And I think we, you know, what I feel like is that we need to think about society in a different way. And we need to start thinking about how we structure um, working life. That means that more people are able to, to participate um, regardless of, of what bodily experiences that they're, that they're having. And I think this is particularly key for women who are going through the menopause where a lot of women um, actually just stop working because they find it so difficult to carry on working, um, feeling that they can't, that their, that their symptoms haven't been taken into consideration. Um, so I would really want, I would really hope that we can find a way in which um, we enable everybody, not just women, but everybody who has um, um, situations where they need to, for their symptoms to be taken into consideration, to have that um, so that we enable them to be able to participate fully in, in what they want to, to do. All right, thank you very much. So. I know you're talking about cis women and referring mm. to them as women, but of course mm. you're not, uh, you wouldn't want to say that trans women aren't women. You're just simply using well, the term as a, as exactly. a cis women. And actually it, it will be trans men will be also experiencing these symptoms um, potentially as well. So, um, so when we, when we think about, um, motherhood um and you know we actually also think about birthing people as well so that, that that it doesn't have to be you know and again this i think this is the difference between maybe we can call that the female experience which kind of relates more to the biological um part rather than the gender so i think that's really important to make those distinctions so you, that's a very important point isn't it because trans men might choose to not to transition completely yeah. and therefore continue to have uh, periods or experience yeah. the menopause and yeah. they would be considered you know as in more generically and biologically um as needing the same consideration about the their biological changes you mentioned motherhood of course and protected characteristics motherhood is specified in the Equality Act, 2010 mm -hmm. Equality Act, as requiring employers and others to take special consideration. Mm -hmm. But as you also say, quite rightly, these other aspects of reproduction in women, the menopause and um, periods and you know, premenstrual tension and pain mm -hmm. and so on aren't currently recognized but you as a senior member in an organization might be approached by a woman or by a trans man in the organization mm -hmm. um, who says I'm having terrible premenstrual tension mm -hmm. and so on and asking for uh, some kind of accommodations mm -hmm. on the part mm -hmm. of NSPC so what would be your attitude to that? Well, I think I would want to, you know, to understand what they're experiencing and and how we could accommodate that. I think it's very important to um, to support people um, and find ways in which, you know, again, it depends on on the situation. If we're talking about this being a cyclical thing it's not going to be like an ongoing um way in which we you know need to make um changes but even on a cyclical basis we we could make adaptations for those particular points if it's if that's um necessary so for example um maybe to work from home for those days where uh, that where they experience the heightened discomfort um if it it's um, you know if it's a pregnancy then again looking at home working looking at how we can maybe adjust the hours um so that we can accommodate um those dif difficulties that they might be experiencing i think one of with with um pregnancy in particular one of the hardest parts for women 
are those first 12 weeks where they are often feeling the worst symptoms in terms of sick, um, morning sickness, but it's at a time where they don't necessarily want to tell people um, at work um, for fear of um, the, it not um, being a, a viable pregnancy. Um, so I think it's it's about trying to in, foster an environment where that you're supportive of people so that even in those situations, if, if somebody is suffering really badly, that they can seek out somebody um, within the organisation to, um, to talk about it so that they, they don't have to make that general knowledge and some adaptations can be um, put in place. And I think, you know, at NSPC, under your, you know, instigation, having the touch points, I think is a really, you know, important part of our organisation that we have touch points for the protected characteristics so that we have got, so there is always somebody that, um, that, that can, you know, who's tuned into that particular protected characteristic and can help uh, mediate uh, with, other, with management around right. um, flexibility and adaptation. You have a champion, in a sense, yeah. in the yeah, organisation. Exactly. Yeah. And, of course, the other thing about, you mentioned pregnancy, attendance at uh, antenatal clinics yeah. seems yeah. very important in terms of the outcome of, the, uh, of your birth. So, mm -hmm. obviously, we as an organisation would strongly support people having the time to attend their antenatal clinics, wouldn't we? Um, yeah, and I think it's a, it's all about putting the person in in the center. You know that the we want to support and encourage and nurture the people that work for us, um, or the, for the students as well. Um, you know to ensure that they are able to um, to to do their studies in a way. And so it's really about trying to find ways that's going to support that um, um, had to happen, rather than trying to be very rigid and um, punitive, maybe, and kind of think, well, you've got to be to do this. Um, I think I think actually then that creates more opportunity for for people to to be able to work, um, you know, just as just as well, but in in different ways that you know that's more. Right connected yeah. to how they're feeling. And the payback for the organisation is the loyalty of the people we give that consideration to, isn't it? And I think Absolutely. we benefit a lot in the long run from that. Yeah. I mean, again, kind of going back to that, about, um, you know, sort of menopausal women, for example, um, is that, you know, on the one hand, we've got people in, in government saying not enough over 50s are in the workplace. And on the other hand, they're saying, we're not going to make the menopause a protected characteristic. And which means that a lot of women leave working because they can't manage their symptoms within the way that's required in their right. workplace. They're creating this real difficulty in our society where we're not actually creating the situations that enable women predominantly um to to participate fully and again you know you could say the same for childcare as well for women who've just had um who've had um you know babies they want pe they want women to go back to work yet the childcare structures are so um difficult or expensive that it means that a lot of women actually find that they can't afford to go back to work because they can't afford to pay for the childcare. So I think there's lots of ways in which our society can could have really benefit from looking at how we structure things and how we almost see, you know, sort of the, looking after children as a, as a side, um, right. side activity. Thank you very much indeed, Claire. That's a very helpful overview of uh, of these issues for cis women and as we were saying some trans men thank yeah. you thank you bye for now bye